Hi everybody, welcome to Otaku Saga, I'm Zero. I'm DK. And I'm Rizzo, and today in Anime Reaction, we're going to be watching the first episode of Tate no Yusha no Nari Agari. AKA, The, the Rising, Rising of, of the, the Shield, Shield Hero. Hi. Hype! Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I've read like six of the novels maybe seven mm -hmm. but zero um, uh how, how much have you delved into the source i've watched two videos about it <laughs> i've only heard a snippet about it from him and i'm hype so there you go this sounds like it's gonna be awesome well i mean yeah the first episode has received a little bit of hate online because people are unrealistic um One. not not people in the series We'll, people, right. we'll, we'll but discuss. we'll be talking yeah. about that, I'm sure, in Winer's, the discussion. Winer's gonna whine, I'll leave it at that. Also, this one's an hour long, so, you know, our timer's only gonna be good for 30 minutes. Yeah, oh. after that, good luck, fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, shall we? Yep. Alright. Three. Two. One. Let's, let's jam. jam. I thought this was the beginning of a fantasy series, not the end of a crime drama. What a metaphor. Fly, you fools. The golden snitch. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's a little bit bigger than I thought. <laughs> Was it a quaffle? Asuka, but why? Last time we saw her as the beach I seen, it didn't end well. Well, actually, it ended. Uh, it looks more like, um... Polo? Horo? Holo. Horo. Yeah, kind of. Little tufts of hair. Kind of like ears. Oh, no, those are totally ears. Yeah. I'm never passing balls to little girls again. Somewhat otaku leaning. Right, and I'm somewhat overweight. <laughs> well, okay, to be fair. The sun is trying to kill me. Hmm. Says the younger brother who has it even worse. Gotcha. Comb your hair. Never. <laughs> oh. What a strange feeling cover. What was he for say? Necronomic. And in perfect Japanese, no less. That would be a good way to actually uh, print a hardback copy of a light novel. Make it look like an ancient tome. <laughs> Wait, what is this doing in the reference section? Also, you are talking to yourself. Somebody else. You're in a library. Shut Shh. the hell up. Man, this animated version of the Page Master looks awesome. Right? <laughs> I said, shut up. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> eh? All together now. Jeez. Kind of looks like Hal 9000 with a green eye instead of an orange one. Rangers, Rear Repulsa has escaped. <laughs> we got a few episodes.
think nothing, you're here. What got you part of the toy deal? <laughs> Well, nah. <laughs> you know, I feel like this is exactly how <laughs> an isekai would happen in this day and age. You figure there'd be at least one who's not really with it at all. Uh, one dissenting voice, and here you, here you have three. Marky Mark, what? Wait till you meet his funky bunch. <laughs> funky bunch? I believe that was the band, right? Marky Mark and his funky, funky bunch. bunch. Ah. Well, at least it didn't wake up in a dark room. Oh, wait, they totally did too. Oh boy. So it begins. Thirty second. And they go through kings like Super Bowls. Do they have, well, I guess they'd have like an academy or something, some concept of higher education, huh? Oh. No one cares! Oh, damn. Oh, damn. Damn. All the, all the disapproving looks. Okay, whatever. I'm the king. <laughs> Subtle, but nice. <clears throat> nice little fourth wall, fourth wall lean there. Hmm. Oh. Shrewd Minister. Nice to have in a situation like this. Everyone looks down on you and no one cares.
This team is off to a rocking start. First, you must fetch me five rapid pelts. And then give it to that guy. <laughs> And so do their wielders. How appropriate. Title draw! Well, I mean, Son not exactly. This guy named Kirigawa was working on those. That is interesting. Heroes from parallel universes. And they managed to th bring three douchebags in. Shit! Bruh. Oh, you poor fool. Don't want to quote it, but it's so perfect. Fuck it. <clears throat> Let's face it, you're basically just here as a beat shield. Shut up! It's the middle of the night!
And tomorrow he starts sleeping in a stable. Sexy means dangerous, kid. All together now. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Damn, word spreads fast. Builds a sword, he's a loner, long black hair, came from a world where his game was a VR MMO. <laughs> <clears throat> I wish we had one of those soundboards. I wish we had one of those soundboards where you just queue up that uh, SAO orchestral theme every time he's on screen now. The skirt is trouble. The Monica Oh, that's what you mean by chess. Oh. Never mind. Go forth, noble heroes. Hey Theron, guide your way. Later, bitch! Pop smoke. Uh, Run. Mm. going down this weird back alley you know she's running <clears throat> he 
It's up totally not ego. Right. Right. Ooh. Likeable, but blunt. The dud. <clears throat> that positioning, though. Surely you've heard of Captain America. That's cool. Oh, man, if you're a righty. No, you can move it around. Oh, okay. Leather armor. Chainmail. Hmm. <clears throat> Run! She's obviously gonna rob you and pawn it. <clears throat> Convenient excuse. And I'll already hold on to the purse strings. This is maximum sketch, bruh. But that's a pretty cool outfit, though. You do all the work, I'll collect the scraps. How's that sound? Thanks, stupid. Slimes? Motherfuckers. Oh. He has a really high defense. <laughs> nice. One. One. <laughs> yeah, how trolly. It's like triple digits, triple digits. One. Uh. And how much do they get? As worthless as you are.
It's like, okay, I'll give you a discount. Certainly hot looking armor though. Hmm. Perfect for ditching, I mean, leveling up in. She's persistent about it. <laughs> A lot of willpower, kid. I wouldn't be able to hold back. <laughs> like, truth be told. Hitting him with the culture shock. That would suck to sleep with. Right. Skill acquired. Long distance candle blowing. <laughs> oh.
egregious <clears throat> crimes against Skyrim and her people. What say you in your defense? Ow. Face down, ass up. Interesting. Run to the hot headed one. weren't one. Ah. Uh, planted evidence. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, kid. <sighs> See about to go uh, Hulk smash on these bitches. He Can't. really doesn't have the attack ability. Ah, oh, damn. I can't accept such a downer for the end of the first episode, though. I say King's face uh palm and actions on point.
nice music. Keep the change, thought. Oh. Nice visual metaphor. I love me a good portocollis. Oh. I'll pay make, you back when I make it big. Oh, man. Also, what is it with scumbag Isekai characters and green capes? Oh, man. Right. I forgot this is an extra long episode this time. Yeah. I thought we were getting to the end of episode one. No, the timer timer's right. ended. <laughs> nice. Target tracking. Very nice. Here, too. Ah, oh, shit! Do you like your shop where it stands? Oh! Okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Just keep him on him as intimidation. That is cool. Wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I like how quick that turnaround happened. <laughs> Paid him back. Nice. Before he made it big. Even better.
Leaf Shield? What is this, Mega Man? Gathering the resource most important in any world money. Oh boy. <laughs> if <laughs> there we go. Once bitten, twice shy. <laughs> Mob dodgeball. I thought I was going to throw at him for a second. <laughs> so cute. Maximum sketch. Yes, but he's designed enough to be a important enough character from the look of it. Ah, the circus. Not exactly. <clears throat> hmm. But they probably treat their people about the same as the circus does. Slaves. Slaves built the pyramids. Slaves built the Parthenon. Oh-ho. <laughs> Human. Oh. 
I hear some of the young females like to be called demi-chans instead, but... Yeah, totally wasn't expecting uh, our, our boy to turn into this rugged, lonesome, you know, anti-hero this quickly. I'm so glad he did. I thought we were going to get, like, an episode of him kind of moping around the situation, trying to get back on his feet. Now here he is, uh, getting ready to buy a slave off the market. And <laughs> scaring the shit out of businessmen. Good oh stuff. Oh my god. I love that scene in the book, too. Hmm. All right, you want to fuck me over? Here you go. <laughs> Except in the scene, the dude actually got, like, scars on his face. Hmm. Like, they really have, like, yeah, like messed them up. Yeah, like, permanent scars. Nice. Okay, I saw a lot of guys with the fucking shades tuxedo mask shades or whatever I saw one what was that uh, what was that one group that um hmm. what was the name I think it was Rose from uh, Tales of the Hysteria oh uh, the um what the Swallows or something like that yeah kind of reminds me of that mm. some sort of small bird okay yeah. Next oh. up, lolly slave trading. No, 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 not not, not slavery. You know, severe special internship. <laughs> Prisoners with jobs. <laughs> so yeah, an intern. Yeah. And also, uh, who, who yeah, this is totally here? the never-ending story. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it! That should have been the one I quoted. <laughs> I said it was an animated version of the Page Master. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <coughs> oh yeah, now Fumi is a total badass. Total bamf. And like I said, I love that he turned on beast mode quickly. In order to survive. Forced yeah. to by the circumstances. Because goddamn, I mean, starting with the exploitation of you know the monster store dude and just gone from there. I, well, you haven't really been able to see it so much yet in the anime, but I find now Fumi to be a really realistic uh, character, mm. really re realistic representation of, you know, what the the kind of personality changes and things that would happen when you're, something like that happens to you. Mm. Oh, you get bitter as fuck. Right, yeah, you you get better, and there's there's other things that are gonna crop up that have to do with it. Um, I mean, yeah, though. Extremely, real, extremely real, relatable character, I'll just say. Especially for the OS group. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah, when when. When I read the the light novel originally, um, yeah, when when he first got got betrayed, got fucked over, oh my god, it got under my skin. Mm. Yeah. Hashtag triggered. Like, like yeah. Big time for real. <sighs> Um, I do have to say it does seem to be flying through some of the content a little bit. I'm hoping it slows down just a little bit, but uh Well, uh 
Somebody said that it was supposed to be two gore. Oh. Yeah, it's going to be two gore. Which makes me think that they're trying to do, like, a lot of the novels. Well, okay, starting with the first episode here, how much uh, would you say they went through uh, with this first extended episode? Honestly, maybe about half of the first novel. Mm, okay. Like, it's pretty far. The the thing, you know, well, the, the thing that I definitely would say that this kind of failed at. Spoilers, Mouse, or potentially. Anyway. The thing that I, I think this, this episode kind of failed at was... Getting you into Naofumi's headspace, yeah, mm-hmm. a little bit, and because in the novel that that's a lot, that's a lot more drawn out after he gets betrayed, where he's right, you know, as you say, you expected him to, you know, kind of go out there and mope a little bit and whatnot, kind of experience. You get a little bit of that in the novel, but it's still a pretty quick turnaround. To mm-hmm. you know what, fuck these people. I'm gonna survive, and and that's that. Yeah, if if they, if they put in just a little bit more of that, like say, you know, loved it when uh, when the monster trader tried to screw him over, but a few more scenes like that, perhaps a little montage out of it, I think I could have uh, done well to kind of tie the halves of the episode together. <laughs> can't, sorry, can't do crickets well. <laughs> no. But yeah, now now Fumi is one of my favorite main characters. Mm. Yeah, yeah, kind of gone from like, I don't know, just beneath casual or just above casual nerd to just fucking badass anti hero. Uh, personality wise, uh, like after the betrayal, he reminds me a lot of like Siegfried from Soul Calibur. Just like, you know, Lone Wanderer and all this stuff. So again, yeah, just wandering the kingdom, just trying to survive. Yeah. With all this, you know, this uh, history bomb. Now, now Fumi. Mm. N a o f u m i, not Sumi. Rot, rot. Um, <laughs> but uh, Fumi. Um, so so, what did you guys think of the whole? You know, the heroes were all summoned from different Japan's. I like that bit. That was actually really cool. Mm. Um, it's definitely that's definitely a, a cool little spin on the summoning the heroes um i wish they would have talked about what the last thing that they remember was which was uh so i don't remember the other two but the dude with long hair mm-hmm. um Mal- Mats, whatever the spear fuck hero is, the douche the, which one he he got I, if I remember right, he either got pushed in front of a truck or, like, a <laughs> dumpster came rolling down a hill and crushed him or something. Or was it he the one who got stabbed? I can't remember. Basically, he 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 got murdered by a jealous ex-girlfriend. Fantasy's truck coon got him. The truck coon got him, yeah. Basically, he got pushed out in front of a truck, I think. Yeah, is what happened. Dang. By, by a jealous ex-girlfriend. Because, like, that's setting up his personality. Mm. He He's a playboy. Did the others also die? Yes. So oh. th- that was also something in, in, interesting in the book. I hope that I'm not spoiling a lot because then you never know if it's ever going to come back to it. Right. But all the other three heroes died. And now Fumi did not. He was just summoned by the book. Right. Literally. So, oh, there it is, Dark Gamer. In his previous world, Motoyatsu was a university student. He had two girlfriends, uh, neither of which knew that he was dating the other. They ended up having a fight, and he was stabbed and killed in the process. So, that was it. Oh, okay. Get done deserved it. (laughs) Yeah, but, yeah, basically that conversation uh, that they had that the night when they're all still friendly with each other, that re- really goes a long way towards like showing the other's personalities because like uh Moriyatsu is a you know he's a playboy right uh, you know he's always going he he's the guy that i feel like a lot of these uh 
like, like the the way that he acts in this episode, a lot of these people who are complaining about the, uh, uh, you know, the false rape accusation, you know, he he's the kind of guy that they'd be like, where they're like, oh, I'll protect women no matter what. You know, women are always right. Yeah. One of those types. A white uh, knight, huh? The the other two, um, they're they're not like that, but no. they're. I say, Sword Hero is kind of sort of like stuck up. Um. Right, I can't remember perfect. which one. It's been a while since I read the novels, by the way, but I can't remember which one. One of them's like a really um, idealistic type hero. I uh, guess it'd be the bow hero. Yeah, I can't remember. I kind think of, it was the bow hero. Kind of reminds me of uh, Katra from Gundam Wing. A hardworking sort of idealist. And then you got your uh, sort of prim proper, like, doctor's son, a sort of stick-in-the-mud overachiever in the sword hero. Yeah, but... Um... The thing that you have to remember with the other three, uh, Fanta, is that, you know, that it's not just like this world is similar to a game from from where they're from. Hmm. This game, this world is exactly the same. Yeah, they name it. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, they name it differently because different the universes and all. But right, it is right, a game. but yeah, the like this world is exactly one hundred percent the same. As the games, well, not exactly one hundred percent, but uh, that's like way down the road, so I don't want to talk about that. Similar enough that they're familiar with it. That's, I guess we can leave it that for now. Well, not not even that they're familiar with it. Like, you know, if they played the game to completion, which the game in each of their world was like one of the most popular RPGs. Oh, so the Bowman was hit by truck him. Oh, mm-hmm. uh, was it? Nice. Yeah, yeah, Dark Gamer has been uh... talking about their, you know, their backstories. Yeah. Mm. Because unfortunately, it's been it's been quite a while since I read the first novel, which like, (laughs) wicked. I I read, yeah, Uh, I read. I read. Obviously, I mean, I'm you know sitting here filming, and I did not even turn on the chat. Fuck. (laughs) Um, Womp womp. But uh, I, yeah, I can't look at the wiki. But yeah, it's. I read the first novel, like, way before they ever even announced the anime. Mm. So, it's been a while. Um, <clears throat> what else was I talking, you know, talking about? I don't uh, know. I, I like the shopkeeper, the, the weapons shop guy. Mm. Being able to tell angel. that Naofumi was... Framed? Yeah, yeah basically that... that now Fumi was telling the truth based off of you know, like looking at his him, eyes, yeah. looking into his eyes. It was like the eyes, the desperation in his voice, and all that stuff. I was like, "Holy shit, he's serious." Yeah, the only thing, the only thing that I could probably, I could probably say to that one is like the only, the only thing that uh, Now Fumi missed was, "Oh, you two, go for it." But yeah. at the same time, I think I think that's what his eyes said, like. Yeah. It's just like he's already given up. He's resigned himself to having to fight yeah. off everyone. Basically. Yeah. So, yeah. Sort of, uh. What would you call it? Resignation in the framed, yeah. in the falsely accused. And now he has Atlas Syndrome. No, no, now he has, uh. What one call it? Syndrome has a negative connotation. Uh, he's well, been... that that's kind of the idea. It's, there's negative connotation to it. He's oh. fight, he has to he has to beat against the world. That's true. He's a total badass, though. Oh yeah, so that can only be a good thing, really, in the in the end. But uh... and he gets a lolly slave. At least I'm gonna assume to fight by his side or really fight for him, given his offensive capabilities. <laughs> Too weak. Please buff. I, I would find it very interesting if he decided to gain enough money to buy every one of those slaves 
oh. and just cause a and it just cause a riot. Just bring the world to the end to the end it's you know, himself. Yeah. That would be awesome. <laughs> I would love that. If I were in his position, that was that would probably be what I do. I'll be like, yeah, I'll raise my own army. I'll destroy this kingdom. I'll Oh, hide. that's interesting. No, Fumi's voiced by the same voice actor that did Sakata from Bunny Girl Senpai. Oh, so you just the Lolly it. Slave is voiced by the voice actors that did my Oh jeez. You can just what I would give to see some video of that in studio banter. <laughs> oh, you're here again, ho. Huh? What character are you playing? Oh my. <laughs> and now mm. we have crossover material. Artists get to work. You already know what's up. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Any anything else to unpack with this episode? Um, I I said it. In, I said it in the reaction, but I feel like the other three heroes when they showed up, and I I don't know. Their their first thought was like, yeah, I'm not doing this. Yeah. It's like screw this, screw you. Why I I, I feel like that is exactly how today's. I don't necessarily think it was I'm not doing this, but it was more of a what's in it for me mm. type thing. Well, I I remember one of them was like, you guys, you guys took us, you guys took up took us out of our world without our consent. Right. Why should we fight for you? Yeah. Which I mean, and I feel valid like, question. Yeah, that's a perfectly valid question. Yeah. What's in it for us? What moral imperative do we have? Are you going to out of here? What the hell's wrong with you? I figure yeah, if if a group is kind of you know isekai spirit of the way like that, you figure there'd be at least one dissenting voice to the whole thing in a group like that. At first, you have three. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like that one, that that little bit, just hmm. is more of more of today's a, a realistic touch, perhaps. Yeah, I agree. I kind of like it actually. It, it's far and away from what you normally get in an isekai, like because you normally get a person who is familiar with games, right, and who's just gonna go ahead and play along. Usually on his lonesome. Yeah, and he just forms up parties with characters he meets in the world. I'll just go buy that with your starting war chest. <laughs> just go to the slave market. I mean. Um, there's another thing. It wasn't. It wasn't really shown too much, hmm. but there was a the part where the king's explaining uh, everything, and it was either Ren or uh, Itsuki. The the, either the sword or the bow guy kind of just goes yeah yeah the, that goes back to the this is exactly the same as their games so I mean imagine if, if the game was so great in their world imagine how many times they played through it right played or, through the tutorial and imagine like imagine just playing a game that you played a bunch and you're just like oh I skipped through, through the dialogue. this that, that was kind of showing that Again, nice little realism, little touches of realism. Uh huh. Um, I didn't really have anything else from this episode. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do like how he uses the orange balloons. <laughs> it's a Keeps him underneath his uh, cloak. His weapons. Well, it's one way to, I guess. Uh... I mean, he he has he has zero offensive capabilities. Like, one of those balloons would, you know, normally it's like one slash from a sword. Yeah. He literally has to grab one of them and sit there pounding on it for, like... For ages. Yeah. Just I, to get I, one I think experience. it was, like, ten minutes or something like that. Right, just to get one experience and sell the hide for one copper. A half a copper. Half a copper. Oh, it's just... It's nothing. All that grind. Yeah. Oh yeah, that. I wish that they would have explained uh, how the currency is too. Mm. And, and I know that they did in the in the light novel. I just can't remember what the exchange is. It was usually by powers of ten, right? Different. Sometimes. I mean, usually. 
Actually, yeah, those orange balloons, they literally do not have enough offensive capabilities to get past his defense. So, like, yeah, the I think towards the end of the episode, you see him going and falling out asleep on the field. Yeah. That's because, like, as many balloons as possible could latch onto him, and not a single one would, would give him even one damage. Right. Their combined DPS doesn't crack his defense yeah at all you would think that a critical critical hit would do it at least something <laughs> well even if they crits or i guess you know every once in a while it's probably still not enough on an individual hit to crack his defense anyway <laughs> yeah zero 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 <laughs> critical but still zero <laughs> right <laughs> Or actually, no, no, even better. It's it's like that scene in the SAL with the, what was it, the Titan's Hand Guild? The character's just chilling there, and this old guild's wailing on him. like, oh, I'm recovering faster than you can do damage to me. I can sit here all day, you won't do a damn thing. Kind of Pretty like much, that. yeah, pretty much. I do wonder if, if that would raise his defense at all. It's I long. believe his defensive uh, levels go up as he actually levels up. Okay. So he'd actually have to gain experience. Yeah, this seems more like uh, level and stat based leveling up, not like skill activation leveling. Uh, and then obviously his defense changes depending on which shield he's using. Right. Oh, which is another kind of cool thing about this series. Love how they show the leaf shield and you can improve his foraging skill. Get better quality materials. And if you noticed, he also got the ability to use the orange, I think, orange shield, orange balloon shield. Mm. Basically, that's what he got for feeding all those. All those orange balloon skins. Mm. Yeah, to his shield. So, I think he also unlocked the yellow one in this episode. So shield, uh, hmm, kind of Rimuru-esque, except it's the not as in-depth. They now have the crazy AI and, uh, I would imagine that the shield probably doesn't really weigh anything to him. Yeah. Plus, it is a rather small shield anyway. Well, also with his defense, I don't know. Really, it doesn't really feel a whole lot of pain unless something breaks his defense, I imagine, right? Well, no, he's saying I wonder if it's heavy having to carry the shield all the time. Mm, physical fatigue. But yeah, probably not. If you can, like, freely move it on his body, but just not detach it. Yeah, well... Oh, that, that, was, a, that was another thing uh they didn't ever show him moving around right yeah i saw him like wear it on his shoulder at one point like a shoulder pad a pauldron which is yeah. pretty cool i mean basically he can he can move it so he can like sling it on his back or whatever this opens up some interesting possibilities i mean yeah it won't do like a whole lot of damage we can imagine like say putting on a shoulder do like a shoulder ramming attack or something like that or putting on his shin to kick someone I mean, you can move it around your body well yeah. i mean me and you have had talks about the abilities of the shield hero. Mm. So, I mean... And you I, didn't record it, why? Because we were in the car driving to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, like like he said, there is no offensive... Cap like, there is no offense of this character. Mm. Right. But. There is no offense of the shields that he currently has. Mmm... So what you're saying is there's a chance. Yeah, pretty much. Fair well, enough. we had that we had a talk about what DK is talking about right now, where mm. hey, you could you could totally go Cap Captain America. I mean, at this point, no. Mm. Well, well we yeah, I mean, he this, he right? can't do that because yeah. he obviously can't can't remove it. That's as far as that talk really went. It was just talking about well, I mean. Yes, you can do the Captain America shield. You can do this. However, you are going to still hit for zero. Mm -hmm. Be, well, it's because like you're in a game, and your attack stat is zero. Right. So even if you punch something, it has nothing to do with the shield, but your stat is just zero. Period. He has to basically. Well, I mean, he obviously does some damage when he punches. Yeah. Yeah, but not. But I mean, basically, like. Him punching somebody in the face would be like me going like that. Yeah. Mm. No well, offensive little, capabilities maybe whatsoever. A little, maybe a little harder than that, but like he'd be doing like one damage maximum. <laughs> so in my hat of the Harrison would do more. That was. 
Um, that sucks because I'm like, okay, maybe it doesn't do like a whole lot of damage to creatures or whatnot, but imagine you know still punching someone in the face with a shield would hurt. But I guess not. I do. Well, like, it's all because everything's based off of stats, right? I do like one thing though. His shield has a knockback effect. That sort of like aura. Yeah. When he, when he hulks out. Well, no. That was actually really interesting. Where, yeah, basically he, like, he, I'm assuming laid down, like, a perfect block or something like that. Hmm. And it, it had a knockback effect on the guards that were holding him down. And not just that, the, uh, the muggers. Hmm. Oh, yeah, the muggers, yeah. But, yeah, the, uh, the knockback effect's like a nice 360. It's like, um, what is it, Neji's, uh, or Gara's absolute defense in Naruto? Something like that, just like all around, just everyone who's around and just gets knocked back. That's pretty cool. Um, I think that's all I had from this episode. Yeah, I mean, I don't really want to dive too far. Yeah, I'm like, do we want to talk about what a bunch of idiots are talking about? I almost don't want to at this point. Yeah, save it for next episode. Well, maybe not save it for next episode, but the the whole problem, I guess we can touch up on it. There is a group of people who think that this scenario would never happen in real life. Well, um, yeah, I mean, there's a group of people, not even necessarily you know in the anime community, there is a non-insignificant sized group of people who think that women are incapable of doing something like this and without without completely stinking up everything i personally have been on the receiving end of that yeah so have i so i and i know friends who also have it is deplorable it is disgusting. It is... I, I mean... You feel like Nafumi. You feel powerless. You feel useless. You feel... And even if it all blows over and nothing bad happens to you, you still feel really pissed off. Well, I mean, not only that, but, uh... You know, it, it affects you. It, I don't want to spoil too much of the series but as you'll see it it affects him more than just pissing him off at this moment mm. like it, it leaves some some pretty deep mental scars oh yeah very and, very akin to uh to Issei around women given his experiences at the start of high school bxd oh yeah no and yeah, it like follows pretty, him throughout the whole pretty series close, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so and i will tell you those scars are still there and I will probably never forget those scars. And because of that, I treat things differently. And will probably always treat things differently. And it is not something that... I mean, if you just decide to try to shove this, these things under the rug, you are opening up a can of worms to allow absolute horrific, horrific things to happen. To people who really don't deserve it. <sighs> and nice guys like me, who always finish last. <laughs> and on that terrible bombshell, we say goodnight. Take us out, Rizzo. Yeah. Sorry about bringing the mood down, but I felt that we really had to say it after all the fucking videos that I've... I haven't watched any of them, but my god. I've watched my side <laughs> I just know of the controversy right um but yeah I mean, it's it, it's just there right I, I've, I've said my piece so yeah anyway so 
Let us know what you thought of the anime, what you thought of our reaction in the comment section below. Yep, thumbs up if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification button. And if you're interested in joining our Discord, look for it in the description below. If you like our uh, intensive counseling sessions here on YouTube, consider going to patreon.com slash and making a donation. We need a bigger washing machine to <laughs> wash all this dirty laundry with. But that's going to do it for this episode of Anime Reaction. As always, I'm DK. And if you think that's deep, man. I've heard... <laughs> We're getting duct tape with this mobile. Anyway. See you next, see you next time. time.